you are welcome to yet another episode of HN What's Your Say? The number one listening show where we discuss real issues with real people like you. We are still featuring our Kelly, real name Robert Sylvester Kelly. Also known as the R&B King. While R. Kelly has been persecuted for crimes that can hardly be defined in the English dictionary, all enveloped in alien charges like RICO and Man Act violation, we all know the truth of what really happened and that is the fact that the accusers also referred to as his ex-girlfriends did enjoy being with him until he either stopped giving them money, or until he ran bankrupt. There are allegations that R. Kelly enticed and coerced these women to be with him, and that these women were underage. In today's discussions however, we are going to make a deeper analysis of all these claims and draw a conclusion as to whether R. Kelly in fact did have any motivations to commit the alleged crimes, and if he eventually did offend anyone anyway. Listening to each accuser's story, there is one thing in common. All these women clearly invite themselves into R. Kelly's life without him having to put in any effort to lure them to himself. With some emerging from his show audiences and jumping onto the stage to dance voluntarily, and later on finding their way backstage and asking for his number, there is nothing in here to suggest any form of enticement, unless the government suggests R. Kelly's talent and finances which they were all seemingly attracted to did do the enticement he is now being held accountable for. We must acknowledge that R. Kelly's ordinary lifestyle as the big-time talented artist and songwriter he is was in itself attractive enough to cause any woman to want to be with him. Many like his ex-wife and mother of his children were always hoping for the day he would mention anything that suggested he liked them, and when they finally had the chance, they wouldn't let go until he ran bankrupt or simply left them. We actually saw adult women that were way of age not to know what they really wanted leave their jobs to voluntarily become his mistresses. An example being former radio DJ Kitty Jones who left her job to play trapped in the cage on stage with him. We also see pictures of a one Geronda Pace stalking him right outside his 2008 courthouse, and following him begging for his attention like a lion stalking its prey. If any woman was with R. Kelly, they so much did all the work to be with him and he needed not entice any one of them. Accomplished men like R. Kelly do not need to entice women to be with them for it's always the other way round. To therefore suggest that he could have enticed or coerced any of his accusers to be with him is simply confusing assumptions for truth. It's rather unfair to learn that the government did persecute R. Kelly for simply being the big-time celebrity he is, and therefore a center of focus for many especially those of the opposite gender. What the government did is not any different from condemning a man for being so handsome that every woman young and old would want to be their girlfriend. For God's sake matters of nature and career are not in the beholder's control, and no one deserves to be persecuted for such a phenomenon and being a globally known and appreciated celebrity as R. Kelly is. It's no wonder when his accusers tried to add the element suggesting he also coerced these women, it was quickly and easily thrown out by the jury. Where was the motivation for this? It's obvious R. Kelly needed not coerce anybody to be with him for it's them that were dying to be around him. Even until today as he lies in jail awaiting release, many women on the outside are actually waiting and hoping to have their opportunity at becoming his girlfriends and that's the reality. What is rather strange with R. Kelly's relationships with all these women it's that they were always happy until he stopped giving them money, and those who were with him before he was jailed actually did stick with him until he ran bankrupt. And then right after they left him, they begun to spread all the rumors and describing him as the worst possible person they have ever seen. A man who has been good all through cannot all of a sudden become a very bad man when B runs bankrupt or stops dishing out money to his women. A case analyst once suggested wrong is not only wrong when R. Kelly is bankrupt. And indeed it looks like that's how his accusers reason. It's amazing just how much picture evidence of happy partners there is on the internet, yet they now all pretend like they were battered to near-death experience and describe R. Kelly as an abuser he never was. You said I was not honest in the interview that you did with us. Yeah. What, what were you not honest about? Everything. Everything. Everything, yes. Meanwhile, there is this particular bunch of accusers who after exhausting their well-negotiated settlements did return for yet a second opportunity at blackmailing and ripping off the R&B king. What the government did in fact was take advantage of scorned women from relationships with R. Kelly where they were no longer getting the benefits they had before and used them to facilitate his downfall. Promised yet another shot at extorting their man, 
it was difficult for these women to refuse the offer of restitution if they in fact joined the government to destroy R. Kelly. By the record, no woman who has been in a loving relationship with a man that didn't end well has anything good to say about their ex. If an experiment was conducted where women who have broken up with men they loved were asked to describe their previous partners, not many if any would get a good review. It's always comments like he was such a monster, I am glad I survived the tyrant. He used to beat me up, he was such a psychopath among many other such remarks. And he attacked me one time in the back of a Hummer and I thought I was gonna die in the back of the Hummer. He, uh, because we... I oftentimes say when he would have an episode, I knew when it was about to happen because his eyes would change and his demeanor would change. And there was something in my spirit, I would get very fearful because I'm like, I think he's going to attack me. For the court to take such claims serious therefore is rather disappointing from the justice system. According to Noel Rogers, those framing R. Kelly had better start preparing to face the Supreme Court. We can all see clearly that it was greed that caused these women to turn against the R&B king who they once claimed they were in love with. Why is it that only when he became bankrupt is when they realized he was the abuser they are trying to baptize him? It's a shame some jurors who feasted on the surviving R. Kelly documentary were moved by such malicious acts and went on to prejudice him at trial. The truth will eventually prevail and R. Kelly will be free again. If you wish to take part in a live interview discussing any of these topics, let us know by sending an email to sashalfnmedia at gmail.com for scheduling. That is all we had for you today on HN What's Your Say. To keep updated whenever we post a new video, subscribe to this channel now. Also remember to hit the bell icon and enable notifications. And feel free to share your opinions with us in the comment section below and let us know if you would like us to publish your views in our next release. We value all our subscribers' opinions.